Hello everyone, in this video I'm going over logging to Azure Log Analytics Data Collector API from PowerShell. Hello everyone. In my other videos I showed you how to add Windows event logs and custom logs to Azure Log Analytics. In both cases, the Microsoft Monitoring Agent had to be installed uh, to collect the log data. In this video, I'll show you how to log data directly to the Log Analytics uh, Web Data Collector API in, from PowerShell. So why use the Data Collector API? Uh, with the Data Collector API, there's no need to install a Microsoft Monitoring Agent. Uh, the data is written directly to Log Analytics and custom fields are defined when the log data is ingested. Unlike custom logs, there's no need to define the fields after the, after the data has been imported into Log Analytics. So what are a couple use cases for this? Uh, one could be an Azure Automation Runbook. The runbook can't interact with the local drive or uh, leverage the Microsoft Monitoring Agent, but it can write data directly to Log Analytics through the API. An IoT device could write, direct, write data directly into Log Analytics, or a custom application may uh, use this to uh, write an event to a log that then triggers like a runbook or something else, uh, like a logic app or anything like that. Um, I'm going to demonstrate this in PowerShell, but the documentation Microsoft provides also includes examples for C Sharp and Python. And a bit of a warning, this is in pri uh, public preview. It's not full GA yet, so some of these items may change down the road. The example I'm going over is with PowerShell. The link that's provided has a lot of good information as well as some examples. As a matter of fact, the examples in here for PowerShell, a couple pieces of that were pulled directly into the function that I'm going to show you in a couple minutes. Um, PowerShell, this requires a workspace ID and a workspace key, so the workspace ID is the idea of the of the workspace and log analytics that you're going to be writing data to. The key is the secure key used to authenticate to that workspace. Okay, just a quick note about the anatomy of the REST API. Um, we need to create an authentication header. This must be signed with a workspace ID and the key. That's why we're going to need it. Uh, that's a hash-based hash message authentication code. The actual contents of the body that will be written to Log Analytics is going to be in JSON format. Um, this is going to be a name value pair format, and you can do uh, multiple name value pairs, and you can also do batch records if you want, or you can just do one record set at a time. The return codes from the API are going to be the standard web response codes of 200, 400, 500. And in the document I referenced, there is a list of all the codes and details on that. Okay, so I created a function that accepts input of time, uh, log type, and hash table uh, and writes that to log analytics. So the date and time is intended to be the date and time that the error or the event occurred. The log type is the name of the log that the data is going to be written to. Um, that's going to be the context that you'll search on when you're looking for data written to log analytics. And then there's going to be a hash table of the payload. So my idea with this function was I wanted to be able to take date and time, log type, and any hash table and write that into a workspace in Log Analytics. So the function is going to take those three pieces. It's going to create a signature. Uh, the create signature is from code from the Microsoft example. It's going to look at the timestamp that you or the time that was given to it. If it's UTC, uh, or I'm sorry, if it's not UTC. It will convert it to UTC and it's going to add the time uh, to the hash table. And then it's going to convert that hash table to JSON and then post that data to Log Analytics. And then within Log Analytics, um, it's going to log to the workspace and uh, it's going to create the custom record types uh, used for, uh, for the data fields. Uh, just a note on timing for this. So uh, there's another documentation Microsoft has published that outlines uh, latency and uh, in log analytics and describes why and how it occurs. Um, logging data from uh, the API seems to only take a couple seconds between the time the event occurred and the time it's actually ingested into log analytics. 
but it can take a minute or two to show up. Another thing about the, the type, the, that, the log type that we're adding, every time uh, Log Analytics gets a new type, it has to create a dedicated storage container uh, for that, It'd either being custom logs or an API log type. Uh, there's a short delay. This can be 10, 15 minutes as uh, Log Analytics creates that de dedicated storage container. Um, so just know that you probably don't want to send a lot of log types. You want to divide out your um, your log types in some sort of logical manner so you're not creating a new one constantly. All right, and just a note about data types. As the uh, key value pair comes in to Log Analytics, it's going to uh, create a value or a key and assign an underscore and then a, a letter to indicate if it's a string, boolean, double, daytime, or good. So for example, if I have a key called error message and that message says uh, server crashed, uh, that error message, the field is gonna be actually error message underscore S for string. Uh, the same if I, had a, if I have a error code, uh, that's a numeric code, it's going to have error code underscore D. So whatever information is passed through, uh, Log Analytics is going to use the JSON inference to determine the data type of that uh, information. Okay, before I get too deep into demos, I want to go over the couple uh, articles that I mentioned, and I'll be sure to include links to these. Um, one is the Send Data to Log Analytics with HTTP Data Collector API Public Preview. Uh, this is exactly what I'm using. All the information in this presentation is pulled from this including the example down here, um, the PowerShell example. So there's two uh, pieces of this. One is the build signature and the other one is the post. Uh, those were pulled almost directly from here into my example that I'm gonna show you. Um, the other one is the data ingestion time in log analytics. That's gonna describe how long things will take and why to get them as, as the data is posted into Log Analytics, um, it's good information to keep in mind as you're using this product. Okay, with that, let's move on to the script that I created. Uh, this is actually a function, and I can make this available to people. Um, the idea is, is I wanted this to be kind of a universal function to write data to Log Analytics. So it just inputs three pieces of information, a date and time, that's the date and time the event occurred, um, a type, that's going to be the log name or the log type as uh, Microsoft describes it. And then the data, which is going to be a hash table uh, value, key value pairs. Um, I've got some verbose messaging in here and uh, I've got a, an area here where I define or set my custom ID. This is our customer ID. This is the workspace ID of log analytics. And I also have a shared key in here. This is the, the key used to authenticate to the workspace. I've got some notes in here that uh, it's not wise to keep a shared key in code like I'm doing here. Uh, if this was production, I would use either the uh, automation secure string or key vault instead, and I've got some language in here to that effect. But for now, I'm just leaving this as uh, straight up um, in my code. Okay, so we move on, and uh, as the script moves through, it's going to look at the date time. Uh, if it's set to UTC, it'll leave it. Otherwise, it's gonna convert it to UTC. Again, log analytics requires UTC, uh, time to be in the UTC format. And then it's gonna add the date time field and the current date time variable into the hash table. It's gonna then convert the hash table into JSON format. And then it's going to call the post analytic uh, Post log analytics data, it's going to pass along the information that I supplied. Um, that post, post log analytics data function, let's see if I can find it here. And this is what comes, this is what comes from Microsoft, uh, but it's basically taking uh, the information I pass along and building a URI uh, to post the data. It's going to call the build signature, which is up here which is going to create the SHA-256 uh, uh, hash value to use uh, to post the data into Log Analytics. 
Um, once it creates that, it's going to pass it along with the invoke web request and it's going to return the response. So that's going to be the 200 if it succeeds or the 400 or 500. Um, once it's done that, this function is going to return that, that uh, uh, success or failure code. So with that, let's take a look at how this works. So here is a simple script I put together that's going to uh, send data to the log type of logging test 2. I've got a get date command for the date, <clears throat> and then I'm just creating a simple hash table with two key value pairs. One is an error text, which is the text of the error message, and the other one is the error number, and then it's just going to return the code. And I do have verbose on, so we're going to see some information come back from that as well. If I run this, um, we can see we got the 200 code back, and we can go into log analytics and search for that. We should be able to see this code uh, from log analytics. In my experience, that's taken two or three minutes, so I'm just going to pause and I'll be right back. Now you can see the log entry has arrived within log analytics. And you can see here I have the time generated. Again, that's the time that the log is actually written to uh, log analytics. Uh, the date time is the event time or the timestamp I put on it. Um, and there's just a couple seconds different bet difference between the two. Uh, the error text, that's a string field that um, is, just has the message that I put into that hash table. The error number, uh, that's set to double and that's a number. And you can see that's all there is to it. So that's logging in. So let's try something a little different now. So this is similar to the one I just ran. The only difference is instead of just having one uh, uh, hash table, I've created a nested hash table. So with this we're going to see that data come through and how it handles uh, nested hash tables. Um, so we'll run this. And you can see it posted correctly with the 200 response. So I'll give it a minute and we'll take a look at that one. So the message is now showing up in log analytics. And as you can see, it has similar uh, information as the previous one. It's got the date, time, uh, error text, and number, or error number. Um, it also has this nested table underscore nested message and nested table underscore uh, nested error. So you can see how it created uh, field names based off from the nested table and uh, added that information in. So with this example, I'm trying to create something that's maybe a little bit more relevant or useful. Um, I've created a try-catch block, uh, so I've got the same type here for the uh, log analytics type, uh, logging test 2. I create an error action preference stop in the, in the try block, and I'm going to try to divide by 2. We know that's impossible, so that should throw an error message. I'm going to capture that error message in this error message variable. I've got the error time, so I know exactly when the error happened. And then I'm going to put that information uh, into this uh, error data hash table. So my script name might be maybe my bad script. And then if I'm running this, um, I may have defined the location as the location where I tried to divide by zero and then the error message uh, will be put in the hash table as well. So if I run this now, there it goes with another 200 response, and we should see that information in log analytics in just a minute. So the event is showing up in log analytics now, and let's go take a look at what it's showing. So here you can see the script source, or the script is my bad script. The location is the divide by zero section. Uh, the date time, just as we expected, and the error text, that's the error message, or the error exception, is attempted divide, to divide by zero, which is all what we expected. So those are three examples of how I use this function to write directly to log analytics. I have one more example I wanted to show you, something that maybe is a little bit more real world. Um, this is a project that I've been working on off and on using it as an example. So the idea is, is I want to run a script for 24 hours pinging multiple uh, computers and then tracking information like the response if it succeeds or fails, 
Uh, I want to be able to review the entire data code and then I also want to track the latency. So you can think of this as something I could run in Azure Automation on a hybrid worker in my data center and then ping uh, specific machines at each of the remote location and just monitor um, the amount of latency for each server. So if we go over here, um, you can see I'm using the same um, function write OMS log file that I used before. Um, I've got some parameters here to set it to run for 24 hours. I've got an array that's feeding it uh, different virtual machines in my environment, uh, remote as well as some uh, web uh, targets as well. So here the type is going to be ping time. That's the table that I'm writing to in log analytics. And then here I'm just doing a for each loop for each one of the computers and gathering the data I described. I'm getting the ping output. I'm going to determine if it's success or failure, uh, get the time in milliseconds that it took to complete it, uh, build a hash table, and uh, write that out into the log file. And to get some useful information, I've actually had this running for a while, so you can see um, I put a count in there just to make sure it keeps going. Um, there you can see it just ran, so it ran and it pinged those uh, multiple mach machines. And I have a um, query here that should uh, uh, create a line chart based on that information. So I'm going to go over into my other workspace where this is logging. And if I paste that in, here we can see the output uh, So for each one of the computers, um, I've got data coming in and I'm able to review that. And you can see if this was production data, I'd be concerned about why uh, this one virtual machine is taking so long to reply. But um, so something like this could be used to uh, monitor maybe if a ping response is above a certain threshold, it could send an alert, or you could just use this for tracking for SLA or something like that. So that's an example of where I'm writing data in directly into log analytics, and then I'm able to visualize that later. So I hope this helped. Um, I'll post the uh, function that I used to write, as well as the links to the documents that I referenced, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe so I know people are watching it, liking it, and I'll keep making them. Thank you.